Okay, we're back to celebrate global connectivity with ThinkTech Global. And we have our, our bureau in uh, Varanasi, India, in the northeast quadrant of India. And we have our regular reporter, our Kartiki Mishra, who just graduated recently and took his Bachelor in Business Administration. Congratulations, Kartiki. Thank you, Liz. So I suppose I should also congratulate Varendra uh, Modi because he won the election hands down. The international press uh, said that it was a, a sweeping victory. Can you give us a handle on what happened? Yes. Yes. Uh, firstly, uh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi is MP, or uh, you can call it Member of Parliament from my own city, Varanasi. So I can say uh, what I have seen in the past five years, a uh, lot of work is done from 2014 to 2019. A lot of development is done in my city because we are from my own city. We have been elected from the city of Varanasi and we won with a majority. And far better than the last time, they won 335 seats out of 540 uh, last time, and they won uh, 353 this time. So the victory is massive for Prime Minister Modi. So, uh, you know, what were his challenges? I mean, he did have some ups and downs during his administration last time around. I remember, for example, um, you know, the question of the currency. He wanted to get uh, all the hard currency out of circulation and make it into a more modern financial consumer system. Uh, and, and for a while, anyway, he was not all that popular. So what was his level of popularity going into this election? Okay. Uh, uh, the best thing that can be more What was his level of popularity going into this this election? His popularity definitely increased. Uh, I should say from last five years, whatever work he did, it uh, gave people the confidence that this person is appropriate for the uh, next uh, election. And they chose him again with a sweeping mandate. So they gave him a majority and his popularity is increased. There are some of his decisions were criticized, but people overlooked that and voted for him as a leader. Mm -hmm. So uh, 900 million voters, uh, was this a, a question of a simple majority vote? In other words, you don't have an a, a electoral college like we have in the United States. You just count all the votes and decide uh, who who had the sufficient votes, and I and I guess a majority would win. Am I right? Okay. Uh, the U.S. works on the presidential system of elections. India works on the uh, parliamentary style of elections, uh, similar to the British ones, which we had in the past. Uh, like, it is a British legacy, the parliamentary elections. So there is a big difference. We elect one person from each seat, and the party having most of the seats become the majority government. So it becomes very really difficult to get a majority in India. And there are almost, I think, 542 seats in total, and you should get around 272 to get a majority to form a government. Mm -hmm. What, what areas of India were uh, uh, his strongest supporters? What part of the polit political spectrum, you know, um, uh, gave him this popularity? Uh, was it the big cities? Was it the rural areas? Was it the east, west, north, south? Who, who were his biggest supporters? Uh, um, biggest supporters, I think, were the youth. The people who wanted to vote for the first time, the first time voters voted for the BJP. And the people who were working or were benefited by the schemes of Prime Minister Narendra Modi. Uh, so various schemes were there, general Yojana was there, uh, you can call it banking accounts for everyone, uh, free gas connections to poor people, uh, Modi Care was also there, life insurance for, or health insurance for poor people. Uh, some direct cash benefits were there. So these were all the reasons why he was so popular, not just in the urban cities, but also in the rural areas. And uh, 
in rural areas, we uh, promoted uh, cleanliness. He built, he promoted the toilets in the rural areas so that open dissipation can be controlled. So a lot of efforts were made by him so that overall development of India takes place. And that's the reason uh, people voted for him and mostly youth voted for him. Mm -hmm. And, and um, what, what issues was he campaigning on? Was it the economy? Was it uh, foreign policy? Was it, uh, you know, domestic uh, issues and human rights? What, what was he strongest on in terms of his platform? I think that he basically campaigned on two basic issues, which were his primary uh, goals in five years. One was overall economic development of how to increase the growth rate, and second was on nationalism. Uh, national security was one big reason and was a very great concern for India. In this year only, uh, February, 14 February 2019, uh, a terrorist attack took place in Kashmir and killed nearly 40% of our water soldiers of our in that territory. So Modi took decisions to teach Pakistan lesson that these terrorists which are based in Pakistan should be curbed, should be controlled. So a very definite message was given by Prime Minister Modi to the people that uh, he is fighting for the nationalism, he is fighting for the national glory, and he will help the country economically also and on the defense of the level of the well, we're going to take a short break. Um, this is uh, Karnaki Mishra. We're talking about the election, the sweeping success of Narendra Modi. We'll be right back after this short break, and we'll find out more about what happened in India over the past couple of months uh, in the course of this election. We'll be right back. Aloha. This is Winston Welch. I am your host of Out and About, where every other week, Mondays at 3, we explore a variety of topics in our city, state, nation, and world, and uh, events, organizations, the people that fuel them. It's a really interesting show. We welcome you to tune in, and we welcome your suggestions for shows. Um, you got a lot of them out there, and we have an awesome uh, studio here where we can get your ideas out as well. So I look forward to you tuning in every other week where we've got some great guests and great topics. You're going to learn a lot. You're going to come away inspired like I do. So I'll see you every other week here at 3 o'clock on Monday afternoon. Aloha. Hey, aloha. My name is Andrew Lanning. I'm the host of Security Matters Hawaii, airing every Wednesday here on Think Tech Hawaii, live from the studios. I'll bring you guests. I'll bring you information about the things in security that matter to keeping you safe, your coworkers safe, your family safe, to keep our community safe. Uh, we want to teach you about those things in our industry that you know may be a little outside of your experience. So please join me because security matters. Aloha. Okay, we're back to Think Tech Global. We're talking to Karnaki Mishra, who just recently took his uh, bachelor's in business administration in Varanasi, India, which is in the northeast quadrant of India. And we're talking about the uh, election of Narendra Modi, who uh, won by a sweeping victory only a few days ago in India. So um, I'm really interested to know how it worked in terms of the, um, the involvement of the party. So you, 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 I guess you elect. Um, the president, uh, but you also elect various delegates um, to the uh, Indian parliament, yeah? Um, how well did, did uh, Modi's party win in that election? I think it was a sweeping majority. Um, uh, Modi won at least 303 seats on his own. His party won 303 seats. And along with the alliance and the coalition which his party has, uh, he won around 353. And he seemed pretty well in elections, he turned pretty well. And it was a victory uh, It was surprising for everyone in the opposition because no one was expecting 
at least from the opposition that Prime Minister Modi will win the elections again. Uh, different political parties were uh, making coalition so that they could defeat Prime Minister Modi, but that didn't happen. So what what you know what what do we have going forward here? I mean, what does the legislature look like now? Uh, how how is it? What's the composition of it? Uh, and I guess this mean this means um, Narendra Modi is very powerful because he's got the all these delegates in in the in the legislature, um, and he will be able to implement his plans uh, with their support. So what will you, what will happen in the legislature? And what plans will he implement? And how does it look for India? Uh, are people encouraged by this election? Uh, uh, do they think that it, yes. it's going to be a good time? Yes, uh, he won at least two thirds majority in the parliament. So it becomes relatively easy for him to now implement laws or to make laws. And the areas in which Prime Minister Modi will work in, in future, I expect him to work, is economic reforms, land reforms, and labor laws. I think these are the three primary key areas in which he will be making laws to have industry manufacturing units being set up to promote trade, and as well as some laws regarding the security of the nation. So, is this, uh, would you say that this is a uh a time of progressiveness, that, that, that what the administration now to follow will be progressive under Modi? Um, is it a time when, uh, you know, the people of India will move to a, a new and better chapter because of this election? Yeah. Uh, the first thing about this election was people voted for development. Uh, there are a lot of issues in India, if you look at India. Uh, is there, tensions are there. Even after all of this, people voted for development. In respect of caste and religion, they voted for the government, which is working for the development of India. So a lot of good things happened in this election, and I hope in the next five years, many good things will happen under the government. Mm -hmm. One important thing is there, that uh, after Prime Minister Nehru, Indira Gandhi, Modi is the only and the third Prime Minister to secure the majority in a complicated term. So that makes it more difficult. So you can see from first Prime Minister Nehru, Indira Gandhi, from Narendra Modi. He mm. is rising as a world leader and as a national leader of the Indian structure. Now how about the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the loyal opposition? Um, that that was a party that uh, tried to uh, beat him down and uh, try to win. Uh, how well did they do? How well did they do in the campaign? How well did they do, you know, in terms of, uh, you know, bringing new voters or holding on to old ones? What was their position? And uh, where do they sit in the legislature now? Do they have any any real leverage in the, in the, in the uh, uh, parliament now? Um. If you talk relatively, the victory of Narendra Modi is greater in terms of the last election in 2013. So the opposition didn't seem to do pretty well against Narendra Modi this time also. The, the main opposition party, which was the Congress, we call it Congress, Indian National Congress, that's the name of the party, was the main competitor for the Prime Minister. And there are other regional parties of different areas which collectively try to do an opposition against the family family. So this came uh, pretty badly because they didn't have a um, space of a leader, they didn't have policy, they didn't have the idea what would they do if they win the election in future. So people had low confidence in the Congress party, so they didn't play the first day mm -hmm. in the election. So I guess uh, we don't have a very strong opposition in India right now. Uh, last time they scored around 44 seats, now it's around 40, uh, 52. So you can see uh, there, there isn't much difference in the number of seats. And still, uh, if you talk in terms of uh, legal terms, 
to be the leader of the opposition, a party must secure at least 10 percent of the total seats, and that's uh, 542 in a year. So to be the leader of the opposition, you need uh, 55 seats. So Congress last time scored 44. This time they scored 52. They still aren't the leader of opposition. So they need to uh, form a coalition to be the uh, leader. I think. So mm -hmm. Well, I wonder what, uh, you know, the world is, uh, is flat these days. Um, we, we live in a global village. <clears throat> and I wonder how, how much of a role uh, India's uh, foreign policy played in this election. Uh, what what um, Narendra Modi was saying about the policies that he would follow, <clears throat> the policy that he has followed over the past few years, and, and the opposition. I mean, with China, uh, with the United States, uh, with the countries uh, to the west and the east, uh, how how much of a role does that play in Indian Indian politics and in this election? The major factor in this election was national security. So the main foreign policy which which we were keeping in mind, or Prime Minister Modi was keeping in mind, was to stop terrorism from Pakistan. To stop that same uh, drone terror, what Pakistan calls with Jashi uh, Muhammad, Lashkar Taiba, different kinds of terrorist groups are there in Pakistan. So Pakistan was one major concern for maybe foreign policy. But how do we tackle uh, these terrorists uh, based in foreign land? And secondly, from the issue of uh, the issue of uh, overall development of India with nations like China and United States. So I'm hoping that this will go in a positive trajectory with the United States as well as China. One big challenge for Prime Minister Modi would be how to deal with Donald Trump. Uh, because Donald Trump uh, is sanctioned from Iran uh, for that no one can purchase oil from Iran. India is dependent on oil from Iran and other nations in the Middle East. So this is one big challenge for Prime Minister, that how we will deal with the Iran crisis which is taking place right now. Yeah, so is there a concern in India about Donald Trump? Is there a concern in India about American, you know, military maneuvers uh, in and around Iran and the Gulf? Um, is, this, is this a threat or at least a point of uh, concern uh, for the people in India and for the government in India? Yes, uh, that's a concern because Iran is a very close ally of India and Iran exports oil and India is dependent on oil supply. They are cheap and reliable. So, after US sanctions for Iran and the tensions growing between Iran and the United States, it will be a challenge for the new government how to deal with uh, this crisis. Because we have to deal with President Trump also, we have to deal with Iran also. So how we can balance between these two powers, that would be a very interesting thing. Hmm, yeah. I would fear for Prime Minister Modi. Well, we've, you, know, you and I have talked a number of times, and I remember on one occasion when we talked, I asked you how you felt um, on, about uh, Donald Trump. This is, what, what, a year or two ago. And you indicated that there was a positive aspect to Trump in the sense that he was a strong leader. And in these, in these days, the world needs uh, strong leaders. How do you feel about him now? How, how you've watched him. I'm sure everybody in the world has watched him for the past couple of years. Uh, India has watched him with particular attention. Um, how do you feel he's doing? How do you feel he's doing on foreign policy and, for that matter, domestic policy? Uh, for Donald Trump, I think the greatest challenge is the foreign policy, how he manages other nations. Uh, he lacks the of diplomacy, I should say. He is taking decisions uh, for the government of the United States, but he is uh, challenging the allies as well. If you look at Donald Trump and the allies of the United States, whether it's the Germany, whether it's the UK, whether it's the Japan, whether it's the Korea, so these nations are concerned about Donald Trump's foreign policy because it's not that stable. He changes the narrative, he changes the perspective. Uh, look, for example, the North Korea summit. 
we have seen successful summit with Kim Jong Un, and I think that this is pretty great. But now the event turned, it was a twist of fate. Again, North Korea and United States are at arms with each other, the race is going on. So I think the foreign policy is one key area in which Donald Trump has to work. I definitely feel that. Would you be would you be looking forward to an, the next American president to normalize things to uh, sort of let them settle down so there isn't so much tension in your part of the world? Would that be something that the average Indian would like to see uh, a president that is more moderate? Yes, I think I would like to see a moderate president. Uh, and many people can contend I think Bernie Sanders will be contending again. Uh, many new faces will be there. From Hawaii, I think, uh, the one, one senator is from Hawaii, and so is contending for the US election. So there is a hint of a moderate president will be there, I think so. And that will be better for the United States as well as for the world. One other thing I wanted to ask you about is you're, you know, so now you're a graduate in business administration. Um, what is your expectation for the economy of India? All these things considered, the election, international affairs that affect you, um, you know, and the way India is, is, is working these days. Do you think the economy of India is worth betting on? Um, do you think the economy of India will improve or, or is it under stress in some way? Um, I would say there is a big stress on the economy right now. Many factors are there. So, uh, I can I call this the uh, lack of jobs are there. So, job creation could be a very great challenge for everyone, from Prime Minister Modi and the government in future, and infrastructure development, and various other aspects of the economy. I think the economy is on low, low down, a slow down is there. And we expect that in future this will uh, increase, this will better along with Trump's this time. And I believe the economy will, will increase, but challenges are there. I believe challenges are there for everyone. Uh -huh. Karnaki, you're, you're, now you're a graduate and you're a business graduate and you've, uh, as far as I can see, you've had a very robust education. Uh, what are you going to do? Are you going to go to further graduate school? Are you? Are you going into the economy yourself? What's your, what are you doing these days, and what's your plan? Uh, I'm planning to do an MBA. I completed my degree. So I'm planning to do an MBA uh, from any college or university. And I want to specialize in particular area, and then work in the corporate sector or go for the job. So my plan is to go for the market. Will you come to the United States? <laughs> Why do I think that you ultimately will? <clears throat> and the last question I put to you is, you know, you're very familiar and articulate about um, Indian politics uh, and for that matter, um, you know, Indian, Indian business affairs. And I wonder if there's a place for you uh, in Indian politics. I wonder if you would ever consider, and whether the community would ever consider, having you as an elected representative to the parliament or otherwise. What do you think? Uh, I think politics is a very good field in India. If you are educated and if the industry is the key, you can be a good politician. I don't think I have a political background right now, but in future, if I get a chance, I will get into politics. If I get a chance, I will definitely I will. And I think uh, the constructive politics in the GDP government of this world, I, will, I feel that in the United States also, in India also, youth must take part in politics. And actively participate in politics so that we can uh, increase the living standards for the people, help the people, and when we say there is corruption, we, if we participate, then only we can reduce the corruption, the problems of politics. If we increase politics, we will try to be part of politics. You know, it's really a treat to talk to you, uh, Karnaki. It's a treat to get your perspective from so far away. <clears throat> it, gives, it helps us understand what we, what we see from, from here. 
And uh, I hope we can talk to you again in the near term and check up and see how uh, Narendra Modi is doing, how you're doing, and how India is doing vis-a-vis -vis all of those countries around you. It's uh, very exciting to be able to talk to you. And I look forward to our next discussion. Thank you so much. Karki Mishra uh, from Varanasi, India. Enjoy so much talking. Aloha.